Hello, welcome to Curiosity, the science show. This is the 42nd episode, the April episode of the Curiosity. Konnichiwa, hello, bonjour from Young Academy of Sciences. Uh, it is a member of International Science Council. So let's look back in the month of March, what moved the world of sciences in that month. So before that, April, uh, we always start with the word meaning the April, uh, you know, the etymology of the word. How did that April originate? It's from, it's from the Latin, apirare. Apirare or apirare means to open, you know. So the April is a month of the first day, first month of the, the spring, right? And uh, when this flowers gets opened up, right? Leaves and flowers. So that is why it's called April, to open, right? Very interesting. So this is the first month of uh, spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. But in case you are watching this video from the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, for example, or South Africa, then, you know, this is the first month of your autumn. You know, very interesting, isn't it? And in, in the, the language of flowers, the so-called florigraphy, this is a month of daisy flower, the common daisy, bellis perennis. Yeah, very interesting. Now, the, the science-related story, one of the uh, not-so-good story, it's very, very disappointing story which came really recently is about the life expectancy or lifespan uh, in india the lifespan the latest figure is 70.8 that is in 2020 you know while the global figure is 73.4 but the latest report by the india's uh, uh, environmental report the state of environmental report in 2023 that says that the life expectancy is remarkably decreased because of the air pollution so in delhi alone the uh, you know there is a 10 year reduction 10 year is it's so significant you see so 60.8 is a life expectancy in delhi state now in 2023 that's terrifically low you see the global average is 73 now here it is 60.8 in Haryana, it is seven years lower. That is 63.8 is uh, a life expectancy in the state of Haryana. And here in Punjab, it is six years lesser. You know, it is 64.8, still almost 10 years less than the global average. It is really terrific. The, the main reason is the air pollution, friends. So, you know, we all have to fight the air pollution. It's a collective responsibility for all of us, you know. And uh, the cover story, or the, the, the featured cover image of this story. By the way, all the stories, there is a link in the show notes. Please check it out, right? Uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a giant flying bug. It's a new species discovery. Of course, I also discovered seven new species you might be knowing. Uh, otherwise, please uh, search out in the internet. You can see all the seven new species which my team have discovered from India and Antarctica. So, you know, you can never predict is it going to be a new species or not species right it is an existing species so this particular bug which looks like a uh, you know like a like about a, a butterfly you know uh, or a moth uh, the discovery comes from guess what you know it is basically from a, a walmart store in arkansas very interesting right so they thought that it is it's already identified but then further documentation and discussion with the students over the zoom it was students who, who gushed it is not really already identified you know the, the professor couldn't identify it's amazing story please check out that the link in the show notes so it's a giant flying bug uh, you know it is basically the the bug is something called uh, a lace wing giant lace wing which is from jurassic era friends uh, you know it's, it's called polystochostus punctata is uh, the binomial name the last time it reported was in 1950 so after that you know it's it's all, all together a, a, a new uh, report of course an existing species not, not a new species but it's an existing species but long time thought to be uh, extinct but it has been rediscovered from you know uh, it's a jurassic era you know it's very very ancient right even before predates the uh, dinosaurs from where Walmart star, very interesting, right? Now, coming to other major discoveries from the last month, study finds that the bee and butterfly numbers are falling, you know, even in undisturbed forest. That is very, very sad news. The reason is the native plants are, uh, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, overtaken by 
the invasive species so the planting the native species is extremely important native plants you know so invasive and alien species are everywhere friends here in india for example some of these are very common like parthenium lanthana you know or hogweed in the us icornia or ishornia right here in punjab uh, you know if you go to the satledge river wherever the satledge flows like uh, harike wetland it's full of ishornia you know so we really need to look what we can do to get rid of this invasive alien species uh, for our butterflies and um, you know bee populations second story is also about the air pollution it disrupts the sexual communication in the flies you know even the human being last uh, last month we saw about the sperm quality you know reduction in the sperm quality isn't it so this is this is going to be very uh, you know a blink future for the insect species too right the females are less attracted to the males because of this air pollution and then the males attempt to copulate with other males because of the lack of female the females are not willing that's very very bad the story is coming from max planck institute of ecology in germany the third story is the giant flying which i already covered right in the in the, in the in the Arkansas Walmart, right? It's very interesting. Please check out that the photo so beautiful. It's in the show notes of this story. Fourth story is that, uh, you know, the news study explores why we disagree with, uh, the, uh, with uh, other people often. The reason is that we are really judgmental. And whenever a person says something, uh, you know, uh, we interpret it in an entirely different way, right? The same word uh, based on the intonation and based on who is saying, it can carry different meanings you know so it's all about the misunderstanding and that is the reason why we disagree quite often you know it's, it's pretty interesting story check out that's a psychology related story then the next story is about pfas that is per and polyfluoroalkyl substances you know these are found in uh, in the drinking water and everyday household products may result in reduced fertility in women as much as 40 percentage friends PFO and PFOS is commonly found in, uh, you know, this waterproofing, you know, industrial waterproofing, whatever the waterproofing spray, and or if you buy a couch, uh, which uh, uh, presumably the advertisers say it's claimed to be waterproof, you know, then chances are high that it has got PFAS chemicals in it. Beware of it. The study says 40 percentage reduction in the fertility rate in the females because of the exposure to the PFAS chemical. So it is about the environmental uh, uh, contaminant, right? That's that's very very risky, and it's it's alarming, you know. Sixth story: the physicist invented the lightest paint in the world. That's fantastic, lightest paint. One point three kilogram of it could color the entire uh, jet airplane. You know, Boeing seven four seven, just one point three kilogram. Compared that with the existing paint, we need at least a half a ton. That is 500 kilogram of paint is needed for 737 uh, Boeing aircraft to paint. You know, and the weight savings could cut a huge amount of fuel as well as the the money. You know, the weight is also much much lesser. And of course, the safe. Check out that entire paper. You know, and reflectivity is also very good, and structural integrity is also very good, and it doesn't get rusted. You know. You don't need a uh, frequent repainting as well. It's pretty interesting story. Next story is about the shame. Shame makes people living in uh, poverty more supportive of authoritarianism. That is what the study says. That is the reason why the poverty, you know, that uh, the cycle, the cynical cycle of the poverty keep on continuing till this day. Poverty supports authoritarianism and authoritarian uh, people authoritarian government for example need more poor people you know so that is that 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 particular cycle is extremely uh, you know uh, extremely potent to create you know uh, to create more and more poverty and shame makes poor people hate other poor people too you know so it's a very strong emotion the shame you know very interesting please check out that paper okay eight managers exploit loyal workers over less committed colleagues that's very interesting you know so you need to limit the loyalty to your employers or even the brand that we trust in right so that loyalty is never a good option when it comes to 
uh, you know employability or uh, you know uh, when you come to the workplaces isn't it it's very interesting the more you will do the more money they means your employer will expect you to do you know so that lead to burnouts and that leads to lesser productivity this pretty interesting story which i really like this story uh, story number 9 is that more magnesium in our daily diet that is uh, the, the the paper say uh, more than 500 mg you no know, or 550 mg of the magnesium each day it's a daily input right leads to better brain health as we age so it's a kind of a gerontological study about the uh, elderly population and uh, you know they they were looking at the it's a longitudinal data they were looking at the uh, magnesium consumption when they were like in the middle age and when they become older age how's the brain health it's pretty interesting you know so that significantly reduces the risk of dementia and alzheimer's disease you know in the older age so uh, ensuring proper magnesium in our diet is extremely important so so what food has more magnesium spinach you know any leafy vegetable has got a lot of magnesium in it so as you know pulses and lentils you know so that ha also have got very very good nuts and legumes you know all these have got lots of magnesium in it story number 10 researchers have found that 11 minutes per day moderate uh, you know intensity workout can substantially reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases later in your life so the current uh, you know guidelines say 150 minutes of moderate uh, you know intensity workout every week now this is only 11 minutes that, is that 11 minutes per day is more or less equal to 75 minutes per week you know so that is only half of it and even that has got substantial impact on reducing the future uh, risk of developing cardiovascular disease that is very very interesting story that is coming from the cambridge university now another story is coming from nature magazine Culling of vampire bats to reduce the rabies outbreak has got opposite effect. Very interesting, you know. Spread of the virus have accelerated in Peru. The study is coming from uh, Southern American country, Peru. You know, so vampire wa uh, bats are the natural reservoir of the rabies, right? So the Peruvian government tried to cull that. Cull means kill, kill all the vampire bats population, but then the cases of rabies have skyrocketed you know there is something called cobra effect intended consequence will become just the opposite ironically just becomes opposite you know it's called cobra effect very interesting story about cobra also right the britishers when they want to ward off the cobra in india so they gave a bounty if you can bring the cobra the live cobra we will pay you some money then the farmers in british india they started catching cobra and baby cobra and they started getting some money then farmers thought something interesting why not breed the cobra you know so let me breed the cobra and let me produce their number so that it's a it's a good revenue generator right so then the population of cobra started skyrocketing very interesting well this is a different case though but still quite relatable right now the 12th story is that the first for the first time Astronomers have caught a glimpse of shock waves rippling along the strands of the cosmic web. Enormous tangle of galaxies, gas, uh, uh, you know, the gas and dark matter uh, that fills the observable universe. So it's like swathes of galaxies, friends. The shock waves is actually spreading. That is what it's only a tiny, tiny bit of the universe, like the grain, right? If you hold a, a, a small grain, at, uh, and hold at the arm's length and it you know the, the area that is covered in the celestial sphere is very very tiny but if you zoom into it that is what these researchers did by the way this story you know uh, published in science magazine it, the uh, the first author the lead author of this study is uh, the, the lady lady physicist so usually in physics there's a lot of gender bias but i'm really happy to see that a lady is the first author of this study okay so they looked at that particular position and they, they, they saw that shock waves are being transmitted across you know across the galaxies and uh, gaseous matter and dark matter between these galaxies that's very interesting isn't it by the way these shock waves are not like you would expect 
after uh, atom bomb or nuclear explosion or whatever the explosion is. Not really. So these are something like Fermi, you know, Fermi, uh, Fermi energy. Uh, you know, the Fermi-like shocks when the matter passes through, the energy passes through a magnetic field. That is what the study is about. And it's kind of hard to imagine. You know, and the magnetic fields in the universe is very, very hard to detect. So kudos to this author. It's a fantastic paper. I really like it. Though most of the paper I don't understand, right? It's too technical. Physics is not my field. But I think it has got a huge impact. And this is a highly curiosity driven paper. 13. The time spent gardening is associated with better mental well-being and life satisfaction, friends. When you are in mid to late adulthood, especially in older adults. So spending time with garden and plants, you know, prioritize it. That can bring you a lot of happiness, mental peace of mind, you know, peace of mind, of course, right? 14 story. Researchers found that when they turn the cancer cells into the immune cell, well, all this, you know, programming, right? Genetic programming can, you can do that with the advent of genome editing tools like CRISPR-Cas and other tools. Now you can convert one particular cell to another particular cell by uh, turning, switching on and off certain cells, uh, certain genes, you know. So the, the, these uh, cancer researchers, they converted the cancer cells into the immune cells. But of course, they turned off few genes responsible for, uh, you know, the cell division, right? Uncontrolled cell division that we don't need that, right? Then it will lead to the immune system overexpression and autoimmune disease, right? So they turned it off. But if you convert this way, you know, with all the precautions involved, then what is going to happen is that they were able to teach the immune cells how to attack the cancer. That is pretty This is a brand new approach for the cancer immunotherapy. You know, very, very interesting paper. I really like it. I'm really hopeful that this particular approach can have a huge impact on the, the cancer uh, therapy later. Another approach is on the 15th story of this week, this month. Cancer researchers show that introducing bacteria into the tumor environment, the micro environment where the tumor grows, if you introduce some bacteria in it, that creates a state of local inflammation that triggers the immune system's primary responder cells, the T cells, of course, and B cells, uh, to attack it rather than protect the tumor. So, de facto response from the tumor cell is to protect the, the tumor, uh, I mean, immune system is to protect the tumor cell because immune system think the tumor cells are part of our own body so they don't they don't want to attack it and kill it so instead they protect it you know so if you make a little bit of the inflammation of the immune cells uh, the tumor sorry tumor cells then the immune system uh, cells like b cell and t cell can attack it and kill it that's pretty interesting what you need to do is to introduce the bacteria you know, the in, uh, create a inflammation in the tumor cells. You know, that's a very, very interesting story. And the last story of this month is about the coffee. You know, coffee. <sighs> very nice. It's not coffee. I'm drinking, uh, you know, chilled water. All right. So high blood caffeine levels may reduce the body weight uh, as well as a type 2 diabetes mellitus according to the study from uh, Imperial College London. Very, very interesting study. So if you increase the caffeine in your uh, blood, so by, of course, the coffee, even tea, tea contains the caffeine, you know. So that can uh, aid in weight reduction as well as reducing the chance of uh, risk of having type 2 diabetes later in your life. Check it out. The story is linked in the show notes of this. I mean, there are a lot of lot more stories. I'm not covering everything because of the paucity of time. Please do check the Young Academy of India's Facebook page. Again, linked up in the show notes. And uh, check out the stories as and when our moderators do share. Okay, uh, You're also welcome to share very interesting peer-reviewed uh, studies. Not merely of sciences, but also the, the psychology. You might have seen that in this, uh, you know, the curiosity. We do cover various stories related to psychology as well as the, the you know, uh, as well as the social sciences, okay. Coming next part is about the observances, astronomy related as well as the UN observances. Fifth is Conscious Day, 
you know the the day for international human conscience right so conscience is about uh, uh, morality and ethics right doing good the virtuous be virtuous and help others you know so be empathetic that is what the, the spirit of peace bring the world peace that is what the human conscience is all about so this is a day celebrated with that spirit sixth astronomical event is a pink the the pink moon the first uh, you know and only uh, full moon of the month of april is known as pink moon as, as per the almanac you know indian almanac isn't it red indian almanac seventh is world health day saying tribute to doctors and nurses and all the health workers of the modern medicine all around the world 11th is the best day to watch the mercury in the morning sky check it out 16th is moon saturn conjunction conjunction is when they, they became very close by last month also we have seen in the month of march several conjunctions you know 20th is very interesting day it is the uh, you know the solar eclipse and this year it's a very very special solar eclipse friends it's called hybrid solar eclipse so hybrid means that there are two types of uh, solar eclipse happening concurrently i mean there are three types of solar eclipse right one is called partial solar eclipse or something called penumbral solar eclipse another is called uh, annular solar eclipse when uh, the moon covers right in the center of the sun while the, you can see a ring around it you know it's not complete so that there is a ring the, the ring is called ring of fire you know and the third one is something called uh, you know umbra umbra is total solar eclipse so this one is there is no ring in umbra you know there is no ring it's complete solar it's pitch dark there is no sun anywhere to be seen so in this case this hybrid mode is a combination of umbra that is total solar eclipse and antumbra antumbra is the annular you know annular eclipse i just told you uh, that that leads to the ring of fire so it depends on where you view this uh, solar eclipse uh, you know it's in east timor unfortunately we cannot view here in india you know so mostly it is the south southern indian ocean region and towards the west of the uh, you know uh, australia so east timor is like the epicenter of it right so it depends on where you view you can see that uh, you know the solar eclipse in various form the, at least this two form that is why it's called hybrid by the way the hybrid solar eclipse happen only once in a decade so next one will happen only in 2033 you know so that is really really long time away right 10 years away all right 21st is International Day of Creativity and Innovation. 23rd is the English Day, the day for English. 23rd is also a, an excellent day to watch Lirid Meteor Shower, annual event. And also a, a, an interesting conjunction, Moon-Venus conjunction on the same day, 23rd. So, so many things are there on, happening on 23rd. Next day, that is 24th, is Pi Puppet Meteor Shower second meteor shower pi puppet meteor shower you know if you happen to live in upper himalayas or the western cards or some uh, remote locations the village you know with uh, least affected by the uh, uh, the light pollution then you're really lucky to to see all these meteor showers okay 25th is the world malaria day and 28th is uh, world day for safety and health at work extremely important topic you know safety and health at work and uh, late in april we still don't know exact day that hakuto rm1 that is a japanese mission to the loon uh, the moon it's landing on the lunar surface we are looking forward to it just yesterday they, re they released mission released fantastic picture very close-up picture of the lunar craters they're still on the way right so within next one month uh towards the end of this month uh, you know april we can uh, we hope that hakuto rm1 is going to land on the surface of the moon it's very very interesting final part of the curiosity is opportunities for the young researchers and scientists and students uh, the young academy is having mentex core right that is uh, you can expect it very very soon 
but right now the call is open for mentors if you are a researcher you know if you hold a phd or if, if, if without which is also fine you can apply for this call if you are fine to uh, guide a couple of students you know we need at least four students and if you successfully mentor that is supervise our mentees then we will induct you as the fellow of the young academy of sciences young academy of india yeah okay so to become a fellow it's very very straightforward you need to mentor in our mentex score you know of course the students have to submit the report you know so that is the only thing so the the, the fellowship of the ai is for life long and the ai by the way is a member of international science council very very prestigious international body okay so welcome to uh, apply as a mentor of this mentex score please check the show notes for the the link and do apply for it i'll be looking forward to see your application national call for translation of the research and commercialization that is called nctrac 2023 the call is open now 10th april is live dbt welcome trust team science grant is also open 21st april is the deadline another call from dbt welcome trust is a clinical public health grant in case you are working in the health related sector please do apply 21st april is the deadline uh yes another call again from the dbt welcome trust is the senior and intermediate fellowships 2nd april is a deadline hfsp that is the international human frontier science program uh, organization of the, the they are offering the postdoc positions several postdoc positions tenable in france the deadline is 11th may check out all the links in our show notes okay then uh, uh, several grant calls are open in the international uh, you know collaborative grant calls no uh, between india and argentine uh, the argentina india the joint call the, the deadline is 30th april indo israel joint call the second second may is a deadline and indo russian joint call it's all supervised by the dst okay 15th june is a deadline and uh, uh, before i move on uh, to conclude this episode i i can share one of the very beautiful book which i read recently uh, you know the uh, it's not a complete in depth review of the book which you can expect sometimes later the book is called 100 nuggets pearls of wisdom and the book is authored by a scientist an international reputed scientist dr tozama kuwebani uh, ongulie tozama Uh, is uh, her uh, you know short name uh, dr tozama is a scientist and she is a program coordinator at um, uh, south african academy of sciences you know very very prestigious organization the principal body of the the south african academy is called assaf you know so there is a, you know there is something called academy of sciences of south africa right and uh, yes yeah, so this particular book is about the courts very very inspiring thought provoking courts you know it's all about um, you know it's like a fire to kindle your motivation friends i really like this book so much it's all about self actualization uh, it's a very new topic of the positive psychology you know so just by reading some of this court that can really inspire you to get things done to increase your creative potential and to increase your motivation too you know that is very very interesting so the book is about enlightenment you know as well as empowerment and encouragement through uh, you know these hundred selected courts uh, not merely courts but also an in depth explanation of these courts so please check out this book by uh, tozama kubeani uh, ongulie i'm sorry if uh, if my pronunciation of the south african uh, word is uh, you know i uh, if uh, if i mistaken in the pronunciation of this uh, well i really don't know this south african is a beautiful language though you know yes uh yes so tozama coming to her she is uh, one of the leading science leader of the south africa and the entire african continent as uh, she has recently been selected as uh, you know 2011 dst women in science award a very prestigious award by uh, you know the dst of the south african government 
and as well as in 2016 male and guardian top 200 young south african she has been inducted into that very very prestigious uh, you know list uh, young south african is all leadership right she, earlier she served as the co-chair of sayas that is the south african young academy of sciences just like our yai young academy of india it's a sister organization friends sayas uh, you know served as the the co-chair so please check out the link is in the show notes of this book it's a fantastic book i i strongly suggest all of the uh, you know the subscribers of this channel to check it out and uh, of course this is my my book as well i hope you have seen this book life skills it's again on sale uh, you know that the book is available uh, for uh, rupees 435 uh, the link is again in the show notes of it okay so thanks a lot this is uh, that's it for this uh, month's episode of the curiosity i will see you again in the next month with uh, yet another uh, long list of curious stories published in the month of april i will see you again in the month of uh, may and uh, yeah if you haven't please do subscribe to this channel as well as check out our facebook page you know so yeah i wish you very best very productive and healthy uh, month ahead let april be full of uh, full of uh, curious curious opportunities for you all thank you so much for watching and have a nice month ahead goodbye